The issue of domestic violence continues to be of grave concern to the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services. Statistics provided by the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service show that for the period 2010 to 2015, 11,441 reports of domestic violence were made, 75% of them by women. There were 131 domestic violence-related deaths, women accounting for 56%. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Jacinta Bailey Sobas, says domestic violence stems from a range of broader issues and a combination of behavior change and victim support initiatives are needed to address the issue. This is particularly relevant in the context of our current economic situation, which has the potential to increase tensions within families. In this regard, the National Social Mitigation Plan, which was developed by the Ministry in collaboration with the Health Economic Unit of the University of the West Indies, to cushion the impact of the economic downturn on the population, and which was approved by Cabinet in August, is relevant and timely. And as it relates to support available for victims among the services available are safe houses. There are a total of eight safe houses in this country, but according to the Director of National Family Services, the system needs some improvement. In terms of having access to safe houses, it is a problem. There is a need for um, more, and not just, the way at it, not just the way they're operating now, because there are some circumstances where you need to to place uh, a female and children and some of the safe centers um, are not capable of housing a female a family changes in the domestic violence act can end violence against women this is the position of the gender department of the university of the west indies and other ngos their deliberation on this matter launched 16 days of activism intended to help end gender-based violence in Trinidad and Tobago. Mario Therese Bernard tells us more. Legislation for protection in domestic situations needs to be amended to deepen defense of victims. Chair of the Equal Opportunity Commission, Lynette Sieberan Sweet, says the outcomes of breaking a protection order are not punitive but they need to be. She says police discretion in these matters should be reviewed. The problem is, how do you persuade a police officer to charge when there has been a breach of the protection order? And here is an area where we need to do some tightening up of the policy and the, the instructions and the protocols that the police are given to work with. The EOC chair says the initial application is done in a private setting, whereas when the protection order is breached, it gets caught up in the general criminal offenses. Whilst the initial application for the protection order is dealt with privately by a dedicated magistrate, when there is a breach of the protection order now, this entire system falls down because the, the prosecution for the breach, which is now a police prosecution, which requires the police officer to be present to prosecute, well, then everything falls down. Ms. Sieberan Sweet says that removing the victim from the home after a domestic violence incident is a disadvantage to the victim in terms of shelter, their having access to the property, and getting back into the home. It is one of the factors that need to be amended with alacrity. And this one is really the one which is, in my view, going to create a revolution in domestic violence response, is the question of removing the, vic the, the perpetrator as opposed to the victim from the home. Removing the perpetrator, Ms. Sibaran Sweet says in the initial stage, as is required by the law in more developed countries, has the effect of giving them pause, inculcating fear that they may be put out of their homes. The EOC head says it is more effective in dealing with a problem of violence in the home. Mary Therese Bernard, C News. The Secretary of Health, Wellness and Family Development says she believes acts of abuse against women in Tobago are not being reported. Dr. Agatha Carrington spoke with CNews at a seminar geared towards sensitizing people on domestic violence and abuse against girls and women. The event was held at the Gulf City Mall in Tobago. Patricia Nicholson tells us more. The statistics on abuse against women are low in Tobago, but Health Secretary Dr. Agatha Carrington believes there are instances where violence against women and girls are not being reported. In particular, though, um, this is not a very um, 
flashy topic, persons tend to conceal the situation and therefore when I look at the statistics of Tobago, I noticed that it was quite low. Um, I think it is because there's under-reporting, people are not coming out, and, but we encourage persons to let us know what is happening so you can get the support. She stresses on the importance of dealing with the issue. Because our women and girls are very vulnerable and we, we want to pay attention to that. We also want to pay attention to the fact that um, we do not always provide the support required for our children, for our women. And um, this division is giving the commitment that it will continue to do so. But we cannot do it alone. The whole of society must support us. Dr. Carrington calls on NGOs, FBOs and CBOs to get on board the fight against violence against women and girls. Asha Maz, founder of Women of Substance Foundation and a survivor of domestic violence, says she's received numerous phone calls from women in Tobago who are affected by the issue. What I've found is that um, as a survivor who, have, who decided to speak out about what I would have gone through and share my testimony, what I've found is that people, a lot of people contact me about what they go through and sometimes I ask them why not go to social services and talk to the social officers, social workers and counselors there and people are afraid. Ms. Ma says women in Tobago are still ashamed of being stigmatized hence the underreporting. Her foundation is aimed at supporting people like herself. The Women's Economic and Technological Empowerment Center, a department under the Division of Health, is another safe haven for victims. It's managed by Sheila McKenzie. Ms. McKenzie says Friday's event was day one of the 16 days of activism and many more events are planned for the next 15 days. I'm Patricia Nicholson for C News.